This is Holiday Cheer, and welcome to a very special presentation. This is The Witching Hour, Part 2. Last year, we did a very spooky, season-appropriate video-a-day series where we read The Witch Master's Key, a scary book by Franklin W. Dixon in the Hardy Boys series about the evil witch master. Well, not really, but the evil witch master is on the cover. This year... I'm doing something a little different. We're going to read short stories from Horrors, 30, 365 Scary Stories to Get Your Daily Dose of Terror. These are all short, very short stories by different authors with different tones and different themes, and I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I'm just going to pick random stories that seem appropriate. Um, some of these are probably going to be a little bit weird, um, but... I've also got a plan to do kind of a Jonathan Frakes fact or fiction thing with these stories. So, without further ado, Mr. Jonathan Frakes, which is just me doing a voice. Hello. Have you ever gone for a walk in the forest with the sounds of autumn around you? Well, in this story, which is based on The Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man goes for a walk in the forest. This is Autumn, the Clockwork Forest by Michael Scott Bart Bricker. Gears and sprockets fell from the trees, coating the ground in, grust, cr in rusty autumn. Tin Man stopped, listened to the metallic beating of, from the heart of the forest, and knew that he was drawing near. His axe hung by his side, as always, and it too sensed his, the beating, and the Tin Man felt dark curses flowing through the warm handle, the blood-streaked blade. He might have looked forward to his impending discovery, but such feelings were unique to those who possessed a heart, and Tin Man's axe had taken his long ago. It had been a gradual process, the conversion from flesh to tin, and if Tin Man had the capacity to hate, he would have cursed the Wicked Witch of the East with every grinding step, just as she had cursed that terrible axe of his. She took shape from a cloud of greasy smoke, a dark, unclean blight floating within the autumn colors, green copper, tarnished brass, thin, curling leaves of tin, and she imitated his stiff, mechanical movements, then vanished as swiftly as she had appeared. The Tin Man acknowledged her presence, moved on, nothing more. There were advantages of having no heart, and he might have been grateful that the witch's form no longer caused him sorrow, and the chopping of his accursed axe no longer severed his flesh, that his missing human heart could no longer break from the loss of his beloved munchkin girl. But gratitude was a feeling, an emotion of which he had none. Tin Man thought of the munchkin girl as he walked, and his, as his mechanical brain possessed the old memories, he wondered why he had loved her so, why the wicked witch of the east had been so angered by his feelings she had cursed his axe had caused it to lop off his limbs one by one followed by his head and last as it had removed his heart a tinsmith had remade him had hammered out his new identity late into the evenings but his skull had not been be been limit limitless his skill had not been limitless and the construction of a tin heart had proven beyond his capabilities a heart must be made of flesh he had said only flesh can feel Tin Man's quest had been a long one, a perilous journey through the twisted woods and sleepy poppy fields and neglected roads of colored stones. His axe served him well as the razored edge chopped through the wires of dense metallic growth, and he wondered if the curse had passed, if the axe, in finding no remaining flesh to sever, had returned to its old utility. Tin Man emerged within a clearing, and there set into a massive spinning cogwheel was the heart of the forest. It was louder than a human heart and colder as well, and Tin Man watched as the silvery streams of molten metal flowed through its hollow, clicking chambers. The Wicked Witch of the East appeared again, but Tin Man ignored her, kept his attention fixed upon the beating heart. He felt only a hollowness in his riveted confines of his chest, an emptiness once filled by thoughts of his munchkin girl, and he wondered if the heart would fit, if it would prove too large or too powerful for his crafted frame. Tin Man approached, looked at the Wicked Witch into her dark, tormented eyes, then raised his axe, brought it down with all of his might. The heart of the forest shattered. Springs, gears popped off, flew into the air, and through a spray of molten metal, Tin Man watched the Wicked Witch of the East dissolve into a mercuric puddle. The lifeblood of the forest had taken her, but it had strengthened Tin Man, and he wondered if the witch had truly been harmed, if it would take more than a mechanical heart to destroy her. He reasoned. Nothing less than a human heart could do so, and a pure one at that, and the Tin Man looked at his accursed axe and made a wish upon it. As he left the clockwork forest, Tin Man wondered if he would ever have a human heart, if he would ever love again. 
He doubted that his wish would come true, and he was well aware of the fact that he was only a man of tin, and as such he possessed no power to make his successful wish, nor remove a curse. He was no wizard, after all. The Tin Man, as we all know, is a beloved character in The Wizard of Oz. This is a dark and somewhat gruesome tale of his origin story. Thank you for tuning in. This story was fiction, like most of the stories in this book. But there are real horrors out there, and you should be prepared for what come, lies ahead in the witching hour. So hello and welcome back to the witching hour. Um, last year, to start the season of video gaming and spooky stuff, uh, we played a game called Autumn Walk. So this year I decided that I was going to take an autumn walk. And we're going to this place here. We're going to see what we can see. This, I'm not going to fully film the whole walk. But this is a St. Stanislaus conservation area. And it's, it's got all the normal signs. And Normally I don't like to film my walks. But this is, like I said, for this video. And it's important. So we're going to enjoy our time. Um, there's not a lot of fall color yet. But it is very autumn. The weather does feel like... It's very autumn-y, and things are nice. I'm going to try to hold the camera phone as uh, evenly as possible and take you along with me on this little hike, and we're going to see what we can see here. I don't remember if I've been to this area before or not. My Google Maps timeline is telling me I have, but I don't remember it. So we're going to see what we encounter here on this nice little autumn walk. I hope you'll enjoy. I'm not going to talk very much. I want you to enjoy the sights and sounds of everything out here. Some of the leaves are falling on the ground, but the trees are mostly green yet. It's just the uh, way things are living in Missouri. But uh, yeah, happy October and welcome back to the witching hour. Enjoy. And as I'm coming up on this intersection, I do remember coming to this area before. I have done this hike before. Um, it's a nice one. So this is definitely a worthy candidate for an autumn walk. Um, it's not too difficult of a hike. So I'm going to shut up, but maybe you can even use this as uh, nice sounds to fall asleep to or something. Enjoy.
go up the hill so you might hear my heavy breathing. I have a GoPro. I feel like maybe if I got it working better, I could take people along on walks more often and not have to hold my phone up. For something like this, it's a little harder. worth it though I promise <laughs> things don't look terribly autumn here yet it's very green but there's lots of leaves in the ground acorns Falling from the trees. I'm better off with a nice peaceful walk along the river. Still <laughs> looking for views. still with me at this point thank you for hanging around and going on this walk with me It's all the sounds of acorns falling from trees. We're just about the top now. It's a nice area. And here, 
here we go. There you go, this is what makes it all worth it. Like I said, not a lot of fall color, but still something to see. This way. I kind of chose this area because it's more out of the way and there's not a lot of people here. And it's along the river, so it's got potential for some really pretty stuff. It's also um, uh, there was another thought there, forgotten. But it's kind of out of the way, and it's a little early in the season, like I said, for Otomi. Oh, there was also a lot of uh, reviews and reports in this trail of, of there being a lot of trees down and this being really difficult and inaccessible. And I was thinking, well, hey, that might keep other people away, and it might be more interesting of a walk. This will be beautiful in a few weeks with the fall color. Maybe I'll come back and take some pictures for Twitter or something. And you can see them if you follow me over there and stuff. Interesting ruins of something here.
doesn't put you in the mood for the spooky season, I don't know what does. posts of some sort. Remains of an old bridge or something. Oh, here we go. It doesn't look decent though. Oh, they're taking the stairs. <laughs> Looks like the ruins of another place. St. Louis is an old area. A lot of history. A lot of spooky old history. You never know. interesting park because there's such a maze of trails that you can kind of choose to make your walk as long or as short as you want. And it's uh, still an adventure either way. GoPro, you wouldn't have put this in much shaky cam. There we go, that's a nice. Coming back down to the river now. Oh, I remember this part. I did this before, this is really hard. Well, here we go.
And it's all coming back to me the more I do it. Like I was just here. I believe is the Missouri River. This is a little creek called Kalmeyer Creek. The Missouri River might be farther up, actually, but this is where Kalmire Creek goes into the uh, Missouri River. I think that might have been a trumpet or swan. You know, uh, the real scary thing this, uh, about doing this is hiking alone can be scary, can be dangerous. I do a lot of it. I'm just used to it. Um, but I always plan my trips in advance. You know, I think about where I want to go, what I want to see there. I don't usually like to be gone for more than two hours on a hike. And I also don't hike in any dangerous areas. I did do some hiking in the southwest where heat was a concern. And I thought about that. You know, I usually bring plenty of water any time of year. I didn't bring any today, but that's 
my bad I'm gonna get some shortly after this uh, hike <laughs> this is this is more like it here but yeah just be careful and if you live in an area where there's bears I mean, or threats of you know other dangerous wildlife be sure to take the proper precautions for that as well you know hopefully later in the season here during the witching hour we'll also be doing some solo camping and I will talk probably more on the topic of doing things alone and how dangerous it can be because you know it's fun to enjoy stories about ghosts and witches and, and monsters but really the real scary things in this world are other human beings and the wildlife, you know, and just the dangerous, like, some of these places I've been hiking here today even, I could have fallen, like, down this bank, I could have fallen off the edge of the, of the cliff, you know, and I'm here alone. I have my phone, but I could drop it, and, uh, you know, you gotta think about these things when you go out in the wilderness, so just be safe if you go on any autumn, autumn walks of your own. Take the proper precautions before you go. Over that but I decided it might be too slippery see proper precautions Disappointing. it or something if you saw that go back and rewind I'm gonna wrap up here in a minute because it has been going on for a little while and I appreciate you know anybody who's hung with us through all of this it's a nice uh, to get out and enjoy an autumn walk and to take you guys with me so that you can enjoy it too, you know. Um, if you enjoyed this, continue, uh, consider sticking around for the rest of the witching hour. There'll be a new video every day this month in October. You know, do something nice and spooky for yourself and your friends. Uh, we'll be doing stuff like this, playing video games and just enjoying ourselves through the entire season. And if you uh, want to uh, check me out on Twitch, I do streams on Sunday mornings um, at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Or, no, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. What am I thinking? Thank you for hanging around to the end.
And I can't think of a better note than that to leave off on. We'll, we'll see you all later and on down the trail. Stay spooky.